this is Dr. Fang Mei Luo from Tiffin University. Today I have Halina with me. The reason we have this interview is because she just published a book. My student just published a book called Renewed Plan. Right? So, congratulations. Thank you. It's not published, published, but it's something I wanted my family to see, okay. definitely, or, or read, I guess. Okay, so do you want to introduce yourself first? Um, my name is Elena. I'm a senior here at Tiffin University for forensic psychology. I got my, I got two associate degrees from Stark State College and then transferred here in 2020, um, mm -hmm. in the fall. Okay, so do you want to give us some background information about this book? So I, my father passed away when I was 12 years old and um, I, uh, you know, months later I asked myself what would I say to him if I could see him again? Yeah. So I just wrote down all my ideas. Yeah. And uh, seven years later, I finally finished it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I want my family to read it because, yeah. you know, I had to live with it. I had yeah. to live with uh, my father's drugs and alcoholism. Um, mm -hmm. I just really wanted them to know what it was like because everyone was so mad at him for the addictions that I just wanted to put a different perspective in. Give us a, a audience a little bit idea how how you structure this book. I am a Christian, so I wanted to tell other people about my beliefs and what Christianity and Jesus has done for my life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am not good at anything. <laughs> what can I do to let people know? Yeah. And it was like he told me, you know, you have that book you never finished. Yeah. So. Oh. Um, I was like, okay. I wasn't. And I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll incorporate you into, in it. Yeah, because your father's story. Yeah, because yeah. that was very important for our family. Yeah. We went to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, he went to a Lutheran church. It was mm -hmm. much different from where my mom went. But uh, he would feed the homeless there. Mm -hmm. And we were very involved. So. But I, I wanted to have my readers walk away with something. Yeah, the story starts with very casual right your friend come visit you my friend actually um, i changed her name for the yeah, book but yeah. she's very important too she used to hang out with us all the time she would come over my dad would you know he had nicknames for her yeah. and uh she was very close with my family we still are very close yeah um and i'm close with her family so yeah. it, it was really cool to have her a part of this yeah so you include her in your story mm -hmm. yeah 2 a.m yeah <laughs> you, know, you cannot fall asleep yeah decide to drive, walk, drive out, her car got stuck because you try to run away from a deer. Yeah, so this is this takes place in a real place. So this picture is actually the road. Oh, really? Yeah. It's really in where? Um, it's in Carrollton, Ohio. Wow, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's about, uh, it's about two and a half hours from here. Okay. But um, my grandparents have owned that place for, gosh, I don't know, over 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I lived with them for a little bit, and yeah. we would always go there. This yeah. was our second property. Mm -hmm. So this picture was taken by my grandpa, mm -hmm. um, staring down at the road. Um, so your grandfather took this picture. Yep. So if you would still, if you would keep going that yeah. way, the wow. house would be on the right side. And in our story, you know, it had to place down at two a.m. Right? Yes. When when her car got stuck, uh, somebody approached you. Yes. So. Those roads are terrible for deer. So I was like, that this would be perfect. Yeah. Um, so in my so my dad owned a black truck. That's what in my mind was okay. what he pulled up in. He, okay. He pulled up behind me in a black that black yeah. truck. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness, he looks oddly familiar. Yeah. Like he looks like my dad. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. And he says, hey pumpkin. That's what he called me all the time. It was okay. pumpkin. It was. Yeah. It wasn't like darling or honey, yeah, it was yeah, pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> okay. It was really cute. So um, that was that was kind of a note to myself. Like okay. that's what he called me. Yeah. And I'm like, who are you? Yeah. I do not know who you are. Yeah. You need to leave. You're yeah. creepy. Why yeah. are you out at 2 a.m.? Yeah. So um, and he tells he starts to tell me things like, um, how do I know this about you? How do yeah. I know this? Yeah. Only your dad would know. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but why are you here? Yeah. Um, and I, I start to question everything. Yeah. And he's like, 
why are you questioning this when you yeah. pray for this every yeah. night? Yeah, I'm you like, pray to want to see me now. I'm yeah. here. Yeah, I, I still do that. I, I'm like, please just show me just a dream of him with yeah. in there with me. Yeah. Yeah. And I have had some dreams where yeah. like he watched me graduate okay. from high school. Okay. Um, so we get in the car and she, he started taking you to different places. Yep. We started because um, we went to the home that my mom and dad shared together. They, my mom still lives there. Yeah. Uh, but that was kind of where our story began was yeah. at home. I'm freaking out. I'm yeah. like, you know, my mom and my brother yes. and my stepdad are yeah. all sleeping in there. Yeah. So we go inside and the room just completely changes. Yeah. Um, it's 2002, just brought me home. Now I, I almost like died as a baby. Oh, so I was, really? yeah, I was a premature baby. Oh. So I wasn't able to come home. I, gosh, weeks. Oh, okay. So when they finally got me home, yeah. I, you know, they took some pictures with yeah. me and my dad. And, okay. Uh, that's, I think that's the first picture in the first book. First picture in the book. Yeah. Okay. That's where the story starts. This is, this is a picture. <laughs> With the pictures there. So, um, because I walk in the room, I'm like, what happened to my brother's yeah. room? Because that's where it used to be. Yeah. It's a small house. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then my brother came along. And yeah. uh, since my mom was always so busy. Yeah. Uh, my dad did so much stuff with us, which takes us to the second place, yeah. the Butterfly Park. That was one of many places he took us yeah. to. Yeah. Tried to be as cheap as possible because yeah. we couldn't afford it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so then, then he take you guys to, um, to the school, right? Yep. The elementary or kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Yep. And my. He walk you to school. Yeah. Yeah. That was always so much fun. Right. Um. He said he loved doing that. He loved yeah. being able to pick us up and I mean it was so close to our house. Yeah. And then when I got into middle school, yeah. it was much farther away. So yeah. the bus stop was right next to the school. Yeah. And he would take us and well, at least me, my brother was still in elementary school. Yeah. And he would blare like eighties classic rock music. Yeah. And at the time I hated it. I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh, my dad's yeah. so boring. Yeah. But I listen to that now. Yeah. I like that music now. Yeah. Um after the butterfly park, we go to my grandma's house, which yeah. she's moved from there now. It's yeah. been eight years since she's lived there. Yeah. But that's that's where everyone was. Every Christmas, um, every year we would go. And that was the highlight of the year, was yeah. those Christmas parties. Yeah. And uh, that's where I decided my turning point was going to be. Because... Okay. Even though everyone was having a good time, yeah, my dad was off in the corner, oh, sleeping, okay, sick, okay, um, and it was the last Christmas, yeah, and I remember because um, they had a nice, nice, beautiful house. It's yeah. my favorite, yeah, um, and they had this like sunroom, yeah, off to the side, yeah, and it had uh, like stone flooring and a wood burning stove, yeah. so. It was so cozy in there, and all windows all around you. Yeah. So you're warm, and there's snow. Yeah. And it, that Christmas, it was dark in there, and my dad was just sleeping like this. Yeah. And I remember just staring at him, and everyone was so mad. Yeah. They were mad that he was sleeping yeah. at a party. Yeah. With everyone there. Yeah. And in the book, that's where I decided. You know, all this is happening, all the goods happening, but yeah. there's still this. Yeah. And I talk about how, you know, I would find drug baggies behind picture frames. Um, he would hide, he would use just regular water bottles and put vodka in it. Oh. And okay. hide it in, throughout the house. Yeah. Like even, and this is terrible to say, but even like in our bedrooms, yeah. they would be behind like the bed frame. Yeah. Um, in the garage, he would throw them up on the top. Okay. So when we actually did clean it out, they yeah. just all fell down. Okay. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, so you you want to show that part of the story? Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone knew about it, but like us kids were the ones finding it and yeah. seeing it. Yeah. Um, my mom was at work. Yeah. And he was. He would be sleeping. Yeah. And I'd say, Dad, you gotta wake up. It's like 4 p.m. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just closing my eyes, honey. I'm just closing my eyes. He would yeah. say that all the time. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. And yeah. I don't know if any of my family know this, but yeah. I remember sitting on the floor. Yeah. And he was sitting on the couch with one of his friends. Yeah. And 
he gave her drugs oh. right there on the couch. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. what is happening? Yeah. Um, I don't know if my mom knows about that. Yeah. But I was it just, it shocked me. I was like, he really just did this in front of me, in front yeah. of his daughter. Did he already update he cannot control himself? Yeah. He would do really good. Like, he has that addictive personality. Yeah. Um, like, all of my family on his dad's side and mom's side and mm -hmm. the other side, mm -hmm. they all, there's a lot of alcoholics through our family. Okay. And um, they all died, a lot of them died from it. Okay. So when he would get off of the alcohol, he, yeah. he would resort to pop oh. or candy okay. and it's like to try to replace. Mm -hmm. okay. He also was a heavy smoker. Yeah. Um and he never went to the dentist. Okay. He, his teeth were rotting. Yeah. He honestly looked like someone you didn't want to be around. Oh. But he was such a sweetheart. Yeah. Um he was he was really funny. Yeah. He cared about us. Yeah. But yeah. he would do things that, like, I, I, I mentioned it briefly, but yeah. one time we were in the car, yeah. and he created a cuss word for every letter in the alphabet. Oh. I'm like, I'm, I'm I, I mean, he died when I was 12, so I was yeah. younger than that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. why are you telling me this? Yeah. yeah. He was funny. So, um, after we went to my grandma's house, we went to the hospice center. Um, and that's where I talk about, like, my panic attacks. Yeah. Um, cause I started to get those really bad after he died. Yeah. Um, we started talking about panic attacks and depression and getting into more of the effects it had on my life. Yeah. And, um, that was when I said goodbye. Cause he was only, he was there less than a week at the hospice center. Yeah, okay. And it was crazy too, because, um, you know, at 12 years old, I would run to Facebook and go, please pray for my dad. He's yeah. getting better. Yeah. He's getting better. Yeah. But he wasn't. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. And I didn't know it until my mom was like, okay, you need to say goodbye. And I'm okay. like, goodbye? Yeah. He's, he's coming home. He's coming home with us. Yeah. Um, so then we go to the graveyard. Yeah. And I talk about how I was, I was happy that he was cremated because yeah. watching someone being put into yeah. a casket, that's... That's even more trauma. Yeah. By putting him in an, a box of ashes, yeah. it's not actually there. Yeah. Um, you can more feel like he's still as a whole person mm -hmm. uh -huh. yep yeah. so he was not in that box he yeah. still isn't in that box for me yeah. he's yeah. i don't know where he is <laughs> yeah he's in heaven for me yeah. it looks like every story you have chance to talk to him yeah a lot in my mind i think if he was able to see us again he would say sorry yeah because I think he was so upset about disappointing everybody. Yeah. He didn't want to disappoint his kids, yeah. his family. Yeah. Um, so I, in it, I had them apologizing a yeah. lot. Um, yeah. I remember the when he when he was in the hospital the last time I came to see him. Yeah. And he frowned at me. Yeah. And I will never forget that frown. Oh. It just because my dad was never sad. Yeah. Um, he, I only ever saw him cry once, and that yeah. was for his grandpa yeah. who had passed away. Yeah. So it was so heartbreaking to see yeah. that. It really yeah. was. Yeah. So how the writing looks like when you are writing this story? Because when you tell, I feel so real. And even this story, it feels so real. So when you are writing, how your emotion looks like, how, 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 how much you can take in every time, how much you can write to free down feel sad or have you start or you feel what's the feeling looks like as a writer it's uh, you know because my dad recorded a an audio message for my brother and i um in 2007 yeah and i didn't get that until i was 18 years old yeah um just for that example it was so depressing listening to yeah you know my dad's crying he's yeah. sniffling yeah he's scared yeah um that that's really heartbreaking yeah. but it's also very nice because you know, I'm sitting there writing the memories yeah. out, and I'm like, oh and then my you, gosh. He, you hear he's talking. Yeah, I hear him. Um, I had to talk to my brother, and he was like, oh, wait, what about this time? We went here, and we went here. And I was yeah. like, how did I forget? Yeah. That it's it's very happy. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely hard writing the end of the book. Yeah. Because I wanted, throughout the book, I wanted to have a transition. Yeah. From happy memories yeah. to okay those are happy and good yeah but behind all of that yeah he was still drinking doing yeah. drugs yeah um so when you are yeah so how do you how do you manage for your story 
you know, for these two part. You know, you have the one you want to share your good memories to your father, mm -hmm. but you also want to uh, people hear about uh, the regret. Yeah. Because drinking and then so take his life away. Yeah. And you also want to show the message is God, you know, there to protect us and then he's in a good place. Yeah. So how do you try to is this everything's just come out naturally flowing or you have to like I think so cuz for you know for scholarships or for assignments that I've had to do in high school and in college. Yeah. That's the end of this well, yeah, I, I included in a include the high school essay. Yeah, yeah. So that one is first, or this one just this just come out in between your writing. Um, I wrote this a in, row of forty roses. Yeah, right? I wrote that about four years ago, I think. Okay, so it's between this book. Yeah, I think that was the first major thing I wrote about about my dad because yeah. I just had it all like bottled up. Yeah, and. After that, it's been so easy just to write about it. Uh, yeah. Of course, it makes me sad, but I want, I don't know. I want to remember it for sure. Yeah. Because with, with this, I'll forever have it. I'll, yeah. If I lose the audio, I have yeah. it written down. Yeah. I have those pictures. Yeah, and you have the book. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. I, because I talk about it in there. I get, I get seasonal depression every year. I don't know okay. if it's like seasonal or, you know, okay. that's actually a thing or not. Yeah. But, um, I get it every year around yeah. February and March, okay. and that's when I finished it. Oh. So I was struggling with work, with like with school and work, and yeah. I kind of, I feel like kind of fell behind, even yeah. though I was turning in things on time. It just yeah. felt like I was behind. Yeah. Um, but after I finished it, like it's like a whole bunch of weight lifted off yeah. of me. Yeah. How how this title? Who gave you this title? Or this title already there at the beginning? It was already there at the beginning. Um, it was, I'm renewing my time with my dad. Yeah. I just thought it was really appropriate. Yeah, very really good. You are lucky to able do this book to renew your time with your dad. Yeah. Since you write all that, you know, from the birth and then your life, every step, you know, your father took you, mm -hmm. and then so when I. When I'm re I keep saying, how how they going to be end? Yeah. How do you determine? How do you want to end in this book? How? What's the ending chapter? You are always oh, right. thinking. Oh, you just let it flow. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I wanted to go to more places, but in reality, those are like forty minute car rides. Okay. So I. It's impossible to do in one night. Yeah. Okay. So I broke it down to just kind of a main like four or five question you ask him or the word you conversation is you never have a chance to talk to him when he was alive yeah i i was really young so when he went to the hospital i was like he'll be fine he's yeah. been in and out of the hospital before yeah. he'll be fine yeah and uh he was at let's see he was at the hospital for three weeks yeah and i didn't have that much time with him because yeah. you know we my mom had us, she had him, yeah. people were coming to visit. Yeah. Um, so the one, and after a while he was unable to speak with us yeah. like properly. Yeah. It was, something was messing with his yeah. um, head. So yeah. when I did get to talk to him, yeah. you know, he frowned and yeah. he said, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't get to properly yeah. Yeah. speak to him at all. But you speak to, with him here. Yeah. So when you are when you write all those conversation and those dialogue with him, after you write, how how make you feel? I felt pretty good. Um, right. I was a little sad because I didn't get to actually tell him that. Yeah. But something I did tell him a lot in the book was, yeah. "We're not disappointed in yeah. you. We love you." Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's a very important message. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of people when they have a heart, they feel everybody already abandoned them. Yeah. They didn't notice that people really love them, right? Yeah, right. there there were some things leading up to the end. I'm not going to say what they were, but yeah. where my grandma and I, we talked about this, where we really think he just gave up. Yeah, okay. Where one thing after another just kept going wrong. Yeah. And we feel that he just felt like he wasn't doing enough for yeah. us, where he wanted to give us a better life. Yeah. We live in a terrible neighborhood. Okay. Um, we, we think he gave up. Yeah. And I believe that. I thought about like how most people put pictures, and I was like, I'll just put them all in the middle. <laughs> yeah, she put here, and then she had explanation. Yep. Yeah. But now after you tell me that I 
and more able to refer them and say, oh, that's the story. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one, let's see here. So this one was after he almost died in 2004. The first time. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, he because in the audio recording he talks about you know he I'm, he says I'm 35 years old and I'm walking with a cane right now please yeah. don't do drugs don't yeah. drink alcohol yeah because yeah. I won't I'm probably not gonna make it yeah um let's and see here this so this is at the farm so this is the same place as the cover of this cover okay um this is behind the house yeah with well, this is my brother and I okay gosh I don't let's see I don't even know how old we were but um. That's behind the house. Yeah. And then your mother, father? Yes. So, um, I forget how old I was there, mm -hmm. but um, that's not at the house that I talked about. That's at a different house. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the only pictures we have as a family for mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to incorporate yeah. that. And then you also have them when they are... Yeah, so that's at the... the renew the vows. Yes, they re renewed their vows. And uh, just a m few months later, he died. But uh -huh. I wanted to incorporate that one and the one from 2004 to mm -hmm. show the difference between how sick he looked the first time versus okay. the second time. Okay. Yeah. So, and yeah. then um, he yeah. was cremated. Yeah. So then you you talk about he finally took you to the graveyard. Yeah. So. Yeah. So writing that part of chapter, the last chapter, how how do you how do you handle it? Is that easy or if you that that you have to say goodbye again. Yeah, I I thought about how I would feel. Yeah, if I was able to hug him for the last time, I wouldn't want to like go. Yeah, that's why he leaves at that moment because like like the first time, can't control it. Yeah, yeah. So we talk about you finally meet him again in yes. this book. But this book has to be finished. <laughs> yeah. So you need to have last chapter for the goodbye. So how do you prepare? How long for you to write, you know, the last part of this? It was it was really fast because I wanted it to be done. Okay. Uh, my great grandmother, she's she's, you know, well into her nineties. Yeah, so you want them to read. I wanted her to read it. I yeah. was like, Oh gosh. I told her, I was like, You can't just die on me, okay? Yeah. And she was like, I'll try my best. Yeah. <laughs> I need a finished book for you to read. Yeah. I and told then you can go and tell my father. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. My my whole family has told her, you just yeah. can't die on us, okay? Yeah. And she's is, like, I is, guess. Is is it your father's mother or your mother's mother? My uh, dad's grandmother. Your dad's grandmother? Yeah, she's alive. She's, she's still alive? She'll be 92 this year. Wow, wow. Okay, so now, okay, so how do you, how, how the last chapter goodbye looks like? How you feel when you are writing that? I'm all, I'm, you know, I'm not just saying goodbye fictionally, but I'm saying goodbye to this book. I've been yeah. writing this for, yeah. gosh, yeah. over seven years. You are years. ending the book at the same Meaning is you ending the second chance to live with your father. Yeah. Even just one night. Yeah. And yeah. I talked to my mom and stepdad on the phone. Yeah. And he told me, he's like, I think this will be very good for you. Yeah. It's going to be very therapeutic. Yeah. And it'll be something you can get out on paper. Yeah. Instead of just. Put kinda, your, yeah. your mind and heart and then stuck somewhere. Yeah. It was maybe. 10 years or 20 years from now, I write about everything past 12 years old. Yeah. But this be is part two. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is... So then, so you decide and then you decide let him go. Let yep. him go back to heaven. Yep. I okay. let it go. Um, Do you need to rewrite several times for the part or oh, just yeah. one time? I had to rewrite it a lot. So 2015 through 2019, it was just writing then deleting writing oh, then deleting oh. so in 2019 yeah i um I, I started to keep it yeah. chapter like half of chapter one was done yeah and it was done for years yeah and then i finally picked it up again 2021 due to the pandemic <laughs> yeah so okay. last august okay. my mom was in the hospital okay. with covid and oh. we were i was so scared Okay. I was like, I'm going to throw this whole book in the trash if yeah. something, if she dies. Yeah. Like, my mom would call me crying and yeah. like, I don't want to go. And I'm yeah. like, uh. You cannot go. Yeah. And my fiance had COVID and yeah. we lived together. So oh. I was by myself in oh the living room yeah. and dealing with all this. Yeah. So to pass the time, I, I would write and I started wow. writing it. Wow. It was so frustrating. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. And then we had to get, because I worked with a, 
Um, she's not technically family, but she's family to me. Okay. Um, and she uh, is a retired English professor okay. or journalism professor. Yeah. And she edited the whole thing for me. Yeah. I tried to call people to get like ideas. So yeah. I called my brother. He yeah. told me about some memories I'd forgotten about. Okay. I talked to my mom. Okay. I said, you know, is there anything yeah. special? He said, yeah. well, at you the hospital. Want to put here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my grandma talked about, um, you know, her, his childhood. Yeah. So when my dad was a teenager, yeah. he actually started drinking, like, a, as a teenager. Okay. So I, I, uh, in one sentence, yeah. um, I put, is it? Is the only reason I'm upset is it because I was so young and naive? Yeah. Or maybe it's because at such a young age, maybe he was destined for that. Yeah. Um, you know, habits as teenagers carry into adulthood. Yeah. Um, you know, he was a smoker. Yeah. He drank. Yeah. That's maybe that's how he, only way he know how to cope. It. I think so. Yeah. I think that's how he was able to cope with stuff, yeah. and because of that, I don't. I stay away no from touch. alcohol. No yeah. touch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not even 21, but yeah. you know, if a, my parent or something would offer it to me, yeah. I'm like, nope. No. I'm good. Yeah. Um, so, is your brother also yes. aware of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We both don't want to. We just want to stay away from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just. It's not something I'm not. I'm interested yeah. in. Yeah. Even though I get stressed really easily, yeah. or like if I do get yeah. depressed, yeah. I just deal with it. Yeah. You write a book. <laughs> yeah, I write a book. Yes. You write a book. Yeah. And then the the. Tell us about this part. So. Um, Read it. So I wrote. Um, Elena finds herself in an unexpected situation when a ghost from her past visits her. He has been gone for more than eight years. How could this be? How could he be here now? By traveling through Elena's past, they explore the truth behind her bittersweet memories and how they have impacted her as an adult. Yeah, um, it's a good summary and leading path for for the book. Yeah, right. Because I, I I just really wanted to, you know, all these great memories. I yeah. wanted to talk about yeah stuff that happened behind the scenes. Yeah, and a lot of you know his alcoholism. Yeah, we had no money. Yeah. Um, we would go to food banks and yeah. get like bread and canned foods and yeah. I remember telling my grandma that and she was like your dad never told me I'm like why she said probably a pride thing because he knew I'd help you guys I'm like well pff, thanks and you know yeah. <laughs> glad to know that now yeah my dad didn't want to yeah just a pride thing he wanted to take care of his family by himself yeah um yeah but yeah we would go to the it was a church or down the street. We yeah. would go get it. Yeah. But then we'd also go to his church and feed the homeless. Okay. So while we were, you are you are feeding other people while you still people be feeding you guys. Yeah. You know we, it, it. Looking back at it now, it it feels nice that even though we are struggling, it's yeah. nice to help other people who yeah. are in a worse situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because things might be bad for you, but someone's always yeah. always in a. Yeah. more terrible situation yeah. yeah i try to think about that a lot right so your father showed the example even he's struggling yeah but then you see his positive side of him yeah right? um he also did like motorcycle runs yeah so he would go and get like teddy bears and go to the hospital and give them to children wow um there's a picture i didn't put it in i should have but there's yeah. i didn't want to be rude to the other people in the picture yeah. But he's on, I don't know who took it, but he's on a road. And there's probably like 50 motorcycles with oh, him. Yeah. That are on their way to the hospital. Yeah. So it's, it's stuff like that that has easily uh, allowed me to do the same thing. Cause, oh. You know, I volunteered at the uh, nursing home in yeah. Carrollton for four years. Yeah. Um, someone I knew had their house burned down. Yeah. So I was working as a waitress. Yeah. Um, I didn't tell her, but... Yeah. After every shift, I would just throw all of my tips in there for her, oh. so that she could. Cause that's you know I felt really bad. Yeah, yeah. So I just I think no matter what, people should help other people. Yeah. Cause you never know what's going on. Yeah, I know. Same yeah. with like you know my dad. He people were mean about it, and I can understand that. Yeah. But it just I don't know. So okay, so then uh, when you finish the book, what do you want to tell your dad? Um. I guess the the main thing I wanted to tell him was, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry you felt the need to go to other I, I, like right. other things yeah. than your own family yeah. or friends um, to cope with the, the depression, the anxiety, yeah. the failures he believed he was having. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know that I'll never. I would never be mad at him. Yeah. Um, I, I like I said, I was really young, so I didn't really have a means to be mad. Yeah. Uh, I was really young, so he did all types of stuff with us. Yeah. He would play toys with us and take us places. Of course, he's going to be that like role model dad. Yeah. Um, but we we did see that dark side of him. Yeah. Of the, yeah. You know, my parents argued all the time. Yeah. We would hear that all the time. So it's interesting because he keeps saying he feels sorry he's not able to see you grow up. Yeah. And now your renew time is when you kind of I'm older, yeah. Older now and then you interact with him. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Um I talk about um, you know, graduations and yeah. that in his audio recording that was the biggest thing was not seeing our graduations mm -hmm. and walking me down the aisle which yeah. really hurts even just saying it makes me want to cry right um that gets me every time because i'm currently engaged yeah and i'm getting married um not this april but 2023 april 2023. you just take this book with you in your wedding <laughs> right so he's right. there yeah <laughs> yeah the pastor is gonna say something for yeah. him there yeah you should be so proud of yourself because you keep not only keep memory you also put them like into very positive perspective mm -hmm. you know and then so when i finish this book i feel like i live in this book <laughs> it's so real the way you write so i mean this so is by really no good. means saying my dad's perfect or the nicest no, person because no. i'm sure a lot of people had problems with yeah. it but this is what i experienced yeah. Yeah. it's just kind of like remember when we talk when we are talk about Franco in the concentration camp, how yes. he experienced. And so this is how you experience. My dad has been the biggest motivation for what I do. Okay. Um, he got me into um, a middle school that was more advanced than okay. most middle schools. Wow. And then I went off, when he passed away, I was in eighth grade. Yeah. And then I went off to the equivalent high school. Okay. It was called Early College High School. Wow. And there I got my two associate degrees yeah. and my high school diploma in honors Yeah. before I even turned, or while well, I was 18, so I just right after I turned 18. Yeah, so he prepared you well. Yeah, and I've had like internal kind of competitions with yeah. him. He took, oh, really? Yeah, he took a high school tr uh, trig. Yeah. I took college trig. Oh. I, I had to one-up him on that. Wow. I was very proud about that. And yeah. that's the only reason I took it was because yeah. my dad took high school trig. Oh. I was like, I need to I need to do this for him. Okay. So at that time, your father already not in your picture. Yeah. You just hear my mentor, yep. you say, I'm going to do better than my father. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to make him proud. Yeah, right. so the reason why I got into forensic psychology yeah. was because of him. Oh. So I knew I wanted to do something yeah. related to criminal justice. Yeah. Um, so like my mom would go off to either work or something, even if I wasn't feeling well or yeah. if I was at home, it was just yeah. us two. Yeah. We'd sit on the couch and watch yeah. Criminal Minds all day. Oh. So wow. I remember thinking like, I want to do what they're doing. Yeah. Now, although I don't want to go into the FBI now, yeah. I want to do something more on the local level. level. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's because of him. He yeah. liked that stuff. I watched it with him. Wow. It created that kind of yeah. bond of watching yeah. it together. Yeah. So, do you want to do something with the counseling, with the alcoholic so treatment? I'm thinking more of, so I job shadowed at the Canton Police Department yeah. for three days. Okay. It was a week before everything shut down from COVID. Okay. So I went and for two of those days, okay. I was at the like children's services building okay. where um, they did like forensic interviews okay. on children who were abused and I remember thinking like this is this isn't you know this might be something I want to do yeah working with children yeah um, maybe helping children feel alone I felt kind of alone as a child yeah. after my dad died yeah maybe I can help others not maybe feel so yeah. alone 
children who are either sexually or physically oh, abused. Okay. How about writing? Yeah, yeah I've just, always just so good with writing. You already finished the first book. I I want to. I I want to be that person who works and then writes about it. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. Right. Those book are yeah, kind of documentary like this, and then but also put your emotion and then all there, and now you done a lot of psychology. Mm -hmm. It can be incorporated with your. I've always wanted to be an author. I really did. I, I spent a long time looking yeah. for publishing yeah. places that were cheap enough that I could yeah. afford. Yeah. And I just randomly, because I did it through. Okay, Barnes tell and them Noble. about. Tell us about the publication process for this. So, um, in order to be a publisher, you have to uh, do a like a vendor registry. I haven't completed that. Um, okay. So this isn't like you can't publish this for okay. money yet. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think for my second book, if okay. I will sell it. Okay. Um, but this, I just wanted it to be for family and close friends. Okay. Uh, but the the website I used, Barnes and Noble's yeah. Press, yeah. and I was able to choose what size I wanted, so I could okay. choose like something like this or this. Oh really? Um, yeah. Okay. And because I had to use color for the pictures, it was yeah. a little more expensive. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, it was like three, four dollars a book. I ordered 65 I think. And then you even have a, a barcode, a barcode yeah. barcode there, so it's really book. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah. who designed the cover? So the person who edited it, yeah. um, I had my grandma gave me the pictures, yeah. and I gave them to her, and I yeah. said, put my title here, and yeah. my description here, yeah. make sure it's not at the bottom because of the barcode, yeah. um, and then I did the spine. Yeah. Which and is, is this you sign it, or did yeah, you already there? It. I signed that. You signed. Looks so. Looks so really part of the book. Yeah. Yeah. It's so match. Yeah. Wow. So now, how when you think about this book, what made you feel? I got a book. I, I know. People, my student published a book. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. I I look at it and I do feel proud, but it also doesn't feel real. Um. Like, I don't know if you ever had a moment where you. It's been kind of leading up to that point, yeah. And then it's finally there, and you're yeah. like, "This isn't real. This isn't it's happening right now." This not real. Mm -hmm. You say this not real. Yeah. <laughs> we we do the interview, so it's become real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was really nervous about doing this, and my grandma was like, "Even if you reach one person, yeah, it's all that matters." It's okay to be nervous. Yeah. Yeah. But then, okay, now after we all talking this, how do you feel? To Pretty good. A, talk to the camera. I'm uh, still nervous because I'm, I'm worried that everything I said was I don't know, not right. I don't know. Uh, nothing's not right. It's all from your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most important is we want people to know, you know, everything can happen in life, but we need to have a, a positive perspective, mm -hmm. right? And then we know, God not give you the burden you cannot carry yeah right but yeah I've, I've prayed about this a lot um, right. I wanted to make sure that what I was giving out was something he would be okay with yeah um, so I, I, I looked at so many pictures mm -hmm. and um, I had to write out the audio for it mm -hmm. and um, I had to restructure all of the chapters because each each location is like 40 minutes apart from each yeah, other. Okay. So I'm like, I, can't, I just can't have 10 so, car scenes. Okay. So uh, so you had to calculate your time. Yes. And see, is it real? It happened from 2 a.m. to what, 6 a.m.? Yeah, I wanted the sunrise to be coming yeah. up to more of a dramatic event. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then your friend called you. Yes, it's at the exact moment. Yeah. So for a couple of hours, you are disappear for doing all this. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to put it in there yeah. that she had, it, I was trying to word it in a way yeah. where it made sense, but in a way, in, in my mind, yeah. God had her asleep for the perfect amount of time. Okay. So she wasn't she going out to look don't for have her. to be worried or interrupt. Interrupt, yeah. Call you all the time. I know. Yeah. Because I, I talk about them like, huh. I checked my phone. She's not, she hasn't texted me yet. Okay. I'm sure she's still sleeping. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted to. 
right at the right moment she called. Yeah. And it's like she can't, she has to believe me now. There's yeah. no car around yeah. here. I didn't go walk. And... Yeah. In my original thing, maybe you will have a, your father take you back to the, your car and then got, and then my goodbye. But so, you didn't do yeah. that way. I had two other endings. Yeah. So the first one, and I agree, it didn't make sense, but yeah. I was just gonna, you, the same one, Yeah. but instead my mom comes over the hill with uh, my brother and stepdad. Okay. And they were visited too, but they didn't know what they were doing. They were oh. just told to come. Oh. So I was gonna do that. Okay. And then the second ending was gonna be, he does take me back. Yeah. And my family's there instead. Okay. But I just, I don't know. I like the way I did it. I know it's just just so good connection. Your friend, no, you I mailed it today to her. So she is she know you right, right? Yeah, I told her she's in it, but I changed her name. <laughs> uh, she's really excited to read it. I, I know just, she's a very important person. I know, but she's beginning at the end. I wanted to respect everyone's privacy, yeah. except for the very beginning. I just used first names when okay. I thanked the three people. Yeah, I thanked my grandma. Yeah, and then my dad's friend who gave me the audio. Yeah, of of my dad. He, yeah. So it was on those like little, uh, oh my goodness, um, tape recorders. Yeah. But it was on the mini ones. Okay. So he had to transfer it yeah, from I know. that to the, the electronic. One. Yeah, it's hard. And then if you listen, then too late. We don't. You don't have machine to read. Right. Right. So. Yeah, so now you just you you transfer them all here. So it's already. Yep. Here. And I added the essay because I feel like that added a little more uh, description of the places. Yeah. I talked about the latex smell yeah. from the hospital, yeah. um, how ugly all of the yeah. wallpaper was yeah. at the reunion or yeah. the place where they renewed their yeah. vows. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just so good. Um, you should be so proud of yourself. It's very easy to read, and mm -hmm. then it's very deep, and then also. You know, because you you mix the you have a past and you you also have a current. Yes. You know, and so everything feels so real because it's something you didn't really put into a magic. You know, you you have a still have your phone, still car. Yeah. You still not able to get back to your car. Right. After that, your father say goodbye. You still need your friend come to pick you up. Yeah. When yeah. I first wrote the first ending. Yeah. Um, my the person who edited it for me, she was like, what about the car? Yeah. I'm like, oh crap, yeah, I forgot about, about that. Yeah, how about the car? <laughs> yeah, so we went and got it. Yeah, looks like your play, the place you, you park your car, but it's safe, nobody going to steal your car. Oh no, that's a very nice uh, area. Yeah. And people are very helpful Yeah. Um, in that community. They're yeah. very nice. Yeah. I changed the names of the towns. Yeah. Like yeah. Jefferson, that's that's a fake name. Yeah. If they are going to make this movie, where where the best place to make this movie? Oh gosh, I don't know. Anywhere in the country. Anywhere in the country. Yeah. Had to be need to have a deer. <laughs> yeah, they need a deer. They need a deer, and they need to have a the 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 stuff you are described. It's a very very good book. I'm yeah I'm, I'm from the reactions that I've gotten from yeah. you and yeah. my mom and yeah. my grandma. Yeah. Um. I haven't heard from my grandpa in Florida yet, but from those reactions, I feel a lot better. Okay. Because I didn't think it was that good uh, when I mailed them to them, yeah. and they said it was good. My mom said she cried reading it. Yeah. My grandma said she cried reading yeah. it. So, I, I'm going, I kind of cry a little bit here when I see you say goodbye to your father. Yeah. That made me cry. Oh. It was, I think the hardest, one of the hardest yeah. parts was writing me at the hospice center watching my 12 year old self oh. say goodbye oh that was so hard that would be so hard so hard yeah. yeah and um coming in the next morning yeah and touching him and he was cold yeah i was like oh my gosh yeah this but is real this it's real he's yeah. gone yeah i feel like i've always had to be more mature mm -hmm. so like at five years old my mom told me don't you know because he was in the hospital the first yeah. time at yeah. christmas and yeah she said don't tell daddy that it's Christmas. He doesn't, uh -huh. he doesn't know. Okay. But he did know. Okay. Um, like that's hard to tell a five-year-old this. Yeah. And having to say, oh, I can't, 
tell my dad yeah. who's in the hospital for yeah. alcohol yeah. that it's Christmas. Like, that's yeah. hard. I know. Um, and yeah. then the second time, yeah, my mom said, you need to say goodbye. Okay. And I remember thinking, well, I'm going to say goodbye, but it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Uh -uh. And I had to be the first person to tell my brother. Yeah. That was so heartbreaking. Yeah. And that's still really heartbreaking because I've had to tell him people have died for, like, hear it from me. Yeah. That it just, it really bothers me to yeah. have to be the one to tell him that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, actually, your mom was so very brave, though, because everything you get through, she also, that's also part of her life, Yeah. you know. So I wonder if she write what would be another part of, what kind of story she's going to. <laughs> I don't know. But she, she did cry the parts where she had to remember yeah. having to do that as a parent. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, we, we weren't at our home together yeah. in over, a, let's see, about a month. Yeah. I think it was like three and a half weeks. Okay. And, um, you know, she was never with us. We were always staying the night somewhere somewhere else. Yeah. So when we, when we came home, we would just all sit in the living room. We would yeah. have no idea what to do. Do yeah. we watch TV? Do yeah. we talk to each other? Like, yeah. what do we do? How to be a family. How yeah. to be with each other. Yeah, and I made yeah. it really hard because yeah. we we did go to grief counseling as a family. Oh, okay. Um, and I hated it. Okay. I wanted to deal with it myself. This is your way. Yeah, this was my way. This is your way. So I, you know, as a counselor, I thought maybe in the future, when we do the Greek counselor, maybe suggest them write a book. But of course, it takes commitment. Well, it may not necessarily be a, a formal book, but it is like a portfolio or something. Yeah, you know. I mean, because um, this isn't technically a book, it's a, what, it, what am I growing? A novella. Because okay. it's a certain word count, no, whatever. Novella? Yeah. Okay. Because it's under, I think... The category? Yeah, it's like under 20,000 words. Oh, really? That counts as a... Okay. I never even knew what that word meant. Okay. So when I do Greek counseling, I kind of have them do something like... I have the, uh, my participants bring the pictures, the photos, uh, yeah. Then come and then celebrate to introduce yeah. the, the person and make them happy, make them proud. Because sometimes when we do griefing, we always talk about how sad. But right. they have life. They graduate from their life. We mm -hmm. should celebrate for them. Yeah, and I, I think they started to introduce that to us. Um, yeah. We had made picture boards okay. um, for the, the memorial. Okay. And we had them there, and they okay. told us to bring them with us. Okay. Of course, I hated going, so I never brought it. But yeah. my brother did. It was good for him. Okay. At the time, I didn't care. Okay. I I really do regret um, being so harsh on the counselors okay. there, uh, and my mom. You should send her your book. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I I just hated it. I didn't want to go. Yeah. I didn't want to talk about my feelings. Yeah. It's okay. I just think it was too early. Yeah, no. It, it takes you what? Up to here. It's like eight years to process. Yeah. To come out of the book. Yeah. So I think, I, you know, I think you are fine. You are good. Yeah. Like, you know what are you doing? It's been easier for other people to deal with the death, but I, yeah. or at least I think. Yeah. But for me, it's been so hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because a lot of time when we do the grief concert, we want people to forget about the people but yeah. we the new therapy we want we don't want them to forget them mm -hmm. we want to put them back bring them back to live you know to have the process like this but we need to forget about them right we need to we need to celebrate and then be, continue be with them so talk about it write the story and that always make you back to your time with your father yeah you know so i actually talking actually and tell the story is a good way to do the to do the grieving counseling so yeah even you still yeah but you already know how yeah you i should be so proud of yourself i just wish i did get that counseling you know yeah. years later okay but we never went yeah it really was yeah so in the future when you be a service provider you can make a suggestion or yeah. you know because through um, your experience yeah you don't have to do right away 
Right. It is everybody has different time, mm -hmm. different time to do the grieving. But I'm glad it was easier for, or at least I think it was easier for my brother. And, yeah. Um, your your brother not going to write a book. No. <laughs> you are the one who write a book, so you yeah. need the time. If you forget him too soon, you don't have this book. Yeah. My cousin in Florida, he, um, you know, he was born and raised in Florida, so yeah. he's far from his family. Yeah. Um, he didn't really know my dad, okay. so I sent him a copy and I okay. said, even if you don't read it, if yeah. you ever want to know what yeah. my dad was like, your yeah. uncle, whatever, yeah. it's a book. you can read it. Yeah. So. Wow. You make a good contribution for your family. Yeah. I'm, I'm nervous to see reactions. Oh, I think you should have no worry. You are, you are hitting other people as well. Yeah. Not only hitting yourself. I asked my grandma what she thought, and she said, I'm going to write you a letter. And I was like, oh boy. On your next edition, you can take her <laughs> Right? Yeah, my mom liked it. Um, she thought it was good. Um, and then my grandma thought it was really good. My grandpa read it. He thought it was yeah. good. But I haven't gotten, like, kind of critical feedback yet. Yeah. So my grandma said she's writing a letter. Oh. I'm sure it's going to be long. <laughs> and I'm actually excited for it because yeah. I'll get to see what she really yeah. thinks. I just yeah. don't think she wanted to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard to just talk about. She also yeah. has time to process. Yeah, the audio recording. Yeah. When I got it, I yeah. sent it to her, but she has not listened to it. Okay. She doesn't want to hear her son crying. I know. So I said, I wrote it out. Yeah. You can read it. Yeah. Don't have to hear him. Yeah. You just read it. Wow. So, wow. wow, I'm so glad I can interview other, <laughs> the real people, my students. I'm so, it's good to be teacher. You have a chance to get to know different kind of students and I'm so honored you share with me this copy. Even you, you didn't make that many copies. I'm, I get one. Um, I'm just feel so honored. Yeah, I ordered ten, and you got the first copy. I got the first copy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I sent one to my mom and brother. So I yeah. sent, I sent and then, two. And then you need to order more. <laughs> yeah, I ordered fifty-five more. Okay. Um, and I've got four left, so I sent a oh, lot yeah, out. Oh, yeah, four left. Yeah, a lot of people wanted one. Yeah. And then I had some people I wanted to have it. So like, yeah. my dad had a childhood best friend. Yeah. She was there at the hospital. Yeah. I sent her one. Yeah. Um, I've got, a, you know, like an uncle mm. in another state and wow. a cousin in another state. Wow. Um, and then I sent two, no, three, yeah. to three different teachers wow. from high school. Wow. Um, two of them are Christian, so. Yeah. They know it's going to be um, about what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other teacher, he was an English professor. Yeah. He helped me uh, gain the confidence I needed. Yeah. I really just felt like I didn't um, have any talents. Yeah. And he would read my stuff and go, "This is beautiful." You and I was like, it. "What? Yeah. <laughs> this is good, really?" Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's when I stuck with that chapter okay. the first chapter that's where i officially started yeah and i was determined to finish yeah with that as the product yeah wow so anything else you should tell our audience if you are have if you do have someone who's struggling with any sort of addiction yeah whether it is alcohol or drugs just be supportive mm -hmm. because they probably already feel like they're failing everyone right now yeah um don't be mad at them yeah because you know, my dad, people were mad at him and he still died. It didn't change anything. Yeah. Why waste your time being upset? Yeah. Just love them. love them, support them, and yeah. know that you're always there for them, even if they are struggling with it. Yeah. Um, even if all you do is have, like, just good memories, just always remember that you can learn from the bad ones. Yeah. Um, I, you know, from not having much money, I learned that I wanted to do something with myself to be able to afford nice things for yeah. me and my family. I didn't yeah. want to struggle. Um, I never bought anything brand new for myself that was even remotely expensive until, uh, gosh, last year. Okay. So, um, I don't know, just be supportive yeah. for your family because yeah. they need it. No one's perfect. Mm -hmm. Everyone has something that they're dealing with. Yeah. And you so. say you've been nervous about this interview, so now we almost finished the interview. How you feel? <laughs> I feel pretty good. Okay. I am nervous that whoever does watch it, they're going to yeah. be like, oh my goodness, she talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Or maybe I touched my face too much. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, the purpose of this interview is to share with you the book. Even she's not selling, but then you know, it's good to let everybody know my student published a book. Okay, and then this is her way to deal with losing uh, her father. Even if you, you know, it took me over seven years to complete it. You can't. It's never too late to do anything. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Never too early to start either. I yeah. started. At 13. If you feel writing, just start to write it. <laughs> yep. Right. Just let it out. I let mean, out. I wrote it out of order. I wrote my beginning first, then my ending, then the middle. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I forgot I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I was just too excited about the, the, the ending. ending. That so I wrote you want that. to finish ending. And then you know what, what's the beginning, what's the end, and then now you Combine start to it. put in the middle. Yep. Wow. Wow, okay, well, thank you so much for sharing with us so many information. I learned so much. I always say everybody is a book. <laughs> right. Now, I not only learned Anina's this book, I also learned you as a book. Yep. Yeah. Thanks okay. for having me. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I really need to hug you, but we are so far away from okay. each other. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm. Good job.